Alrighty then, back once again for another reaction. This time it's Ruby, Volume 5, Chapter 5, Necessary Sacrifice. And the first place my mind jumps upon hearing, ne on, you know, hearing Necessary Sacrifice is Adam's coup for the White Fang. It was the necessary sacrifice to his kind to progress his own cause, as violent and simple-minded as, as it may be. But there's a part of me that also thinks it might be related to whatever story Raven wants to tell to Weiss and Yang. You know, in the previous episode she says she was going to, before they had that really nice moment that made me tear up. So there's a chance for it to be either, I reckon, uh, something to do with the White Fang, or it's related to Raven telling her flashback. This might be a flashback episode, I don't know. I'm excited to find out though. Not going to waste much time because I'm planning to use tonight, which is a free night, to watch as much as I can. So we are going to get this started. No? Well, this is promising. We're already starting with Blake and Son. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. I beat up on giant monsters and robots more than once. I think I can handle getting a few signatures. Okay, so we're petitioning. Your chieftain needs you. Your people need you. Please join the fight and help us save Haven okay. Academy. Okay. Okay, signing up to defend. Yeah. Now, as I said before, taking action me? is a whole we other both step. We have someone with your skills on our side. Mata. <laughs> Get back inside. Mom. I'm <laughs> not going anywhere. There's literally no one. You have no one who is brave enough to step up for the sake of someone else. Huh? Huh? Plus, there's no telling how many people who would have joined have been swayed otherwise by Ilya. Nice to see fish faunus. Oh, that's cool. Aquatic faunus. Confirmation, I guess, that they exist. I don't get it. I How do. Can they just sit around and do nothing with the white fang getting ready to attack. Because not everyone is like you and me. The faunus here in Menagerie, the ones that weren't born on the island, moved here because they were tired of fighting. Yeah. Having to struggle constantly. Menagerie is filled with people that just want to be left alone. And here we are asking well, them to put the rest of the world... That's how themselves. Blake arrived. Holy crap. Yes, I never really thought about it like that. Blake, Blake was exactly the, the same. The is, whatever happens at Haven is going to affect them whether they like it or not. If Adam gets his way and Haven falls, it's only going to make things worse for the Faunus. Everywhere. Adam. He's the guy you used to work with yes sorry forget i brought it up and then i left uh, on a train okay have you ever met someone and thought to yourself they are the personification of this word uh hmm okay well i remember getting to know ruby and thinking this girl is the embodiment of purity oh well i saw weiss was defiance and Yang was strength. Oh, what am I? Jury's still out on that one, but I'm leaning towards Ernest. Ernest, monkey boy. Just like Goku. <laughs> At first, I thought Adam was justice. Then I thought he was passion. But over time, I realized I was wrong. He wasn't any of those things. He was spite. He was just not a monster. Hatred, not rage, spite. He won't accept equality, only suffering for what he feels the world did to him. And his way of thinking is dangerously contagious. Yeah, well. That's what worries me about Ilya. More contagious than like you Adam, think. 
Not yet, at least. He's already done it. But I don't know how long that will last. She was your friend, huh? She was. Her chameleon traits meant she could pass as human. Well, some of that she friendship still remains. She She's a little bit hesitant to fight you. I always admired that. She lost her family in a mining accident when she was young, and she joined the White Fang. Like me, she was more or less trained on the road alongside other farmers. I appreciate this. She learned to survive, to defend herself. But as people like Sienna and Adam started to gain a following, she became more dangerous. These kinds of conversations. Yes, I did too. My parents tried to get me to leave with them, but I refused. I had Adam and Ilya, after all. You know we're going to have to face her eventually. I know. Yeah, and she's tried to offer so, you an out several times. Do? I'm going to try and help her the way you helped me. Hmm? Hmm. You showed me that sometimes you need to be there for a friend, even when they don't want you to be. Interesting. I was drowning in guilt and fear. I tried to push you away, but you didn't give up on me. Oh. And I can't give up on Ilya. It's about time I saved my friends for once. I like this. I like this angle. This is nice to see some more of. Really getting better, huh? Are you hungry? It's almost dinner time. Uh, yeah. That sounds good. I was about to call it a night anyway. So, you've never fought before? Just the occasional small grim. Well, I also wrestled with my mother, but... Wow, <laughs> you look like a natural. Oh, it's, it was his aunt. I've only had this cane for a few weeks, but I feel like I've had it for a lifetime. Yeah, oh. your memories all merge. I sound like a crazy person. I mean, uh, yeah, just a little. <laughs> but at this pace, you'll be combat ready in no time. Aw, oh, Penny. Well, uh, oh, I'll wow, that was well done. How do you handle all of this? Ooh. What do you mean? I'm scared. I'm more scared than I've ever been in my life. Hmm. Than I ever thought was possible. I always knew that I wanted to be more than a farmhand, but this? Who would ask for this? We never ask for this kind of thing. But sometimes it's just what we're given. And I can only imagine how hard that is for certain we characters to handle. Because we wanted to help people. But you're right. None of us asked for this either. We just have to press on and How help. can you be so confident? People have tried to kill you. The world's about to go to war all over again. How are you okay with any of this? He's got a point from a stranger's perspective. When fell, I lost two of my friends. Penny Polandina and Pira Nikos. I didn't know them for very long, but... That doesn't change the fact that they were two of the most kind-hearted people I'd ever met. But that didn't save them. Pira thought that if there was even the smallest chance of helping someone, that it was a chance worth taking. And because of that, she died fighting a battle she knew she couldn't win. And Penny Oof. was killed just to make a statement. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, that choked I me up a little scared, bit. But not just for me. What happened at Beacon shows that Salem doesn't care if you're standing against her or not. She'll kill anybody. And that scares me most of all. That is a damn good point. Pira. Penny. I'd be lying if I said that it didn't hurt. That I didn't think about them every day since I lost them. That I didn't wish I had spent more time with them. This is really good. If it had been me instead, it's getting to me. I know they would have kept fighting too, no matter how dangerous it was. So that's what I choose to do. 
to keep moving forward. Monty. And wow, Blake is spot on about Ruby's purity. This is why she's such an amazing lead. Come on. If we don't hurry, Nora's gonna eat everything. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. That was a okay, super good moment. This isn't gonna be easy. But the fact that you're even trying says a lot about you. Ah. You're braver than you think. Well done, you two. Probably one of my favorite she scenes really of the mean, volume. Isn't she? Yeah. She must have been one of the best huntresses at Beacon, huh? <laughs> well, two years in early. Some ways, yes. But in many others, no. She has her quirks, her faults, just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. But she also possesses something unquantifiable. A spark that can inspire others even yeah, in the Yeah, yeah, that times. same spark, yep. Yeah. This must be really hard on her, too. It most assuredly is. Well, yeah, didn't you pick that up from what she was saying? <laughs> wow, what a Your scene. thoughts are of no significance. If this is how High Leader Taurus wishes to proceed, then we shall make it so. Of course, brother. Still. Come in. Sister Ilya. Oh. Thank you for meeting with us. How may I be of assistance? Please, stand. We have wonderful news. What is it? We finally received a message from the Mistral Brotherhood. The operation was a success. Adam Taurus has claimed his place as the High Leader of the Okay, Lighthouse. okay. Bringing but, things forward. And Sienna? Buried with honor. The other branches of the Fang have been given the story that was agreed upon. A necessary sacrifice. We won't forget I knew it. what she did for us. Well, Indeed. you know, it was one of the guesses. Your maturity and understanding in regards to this matter is appreciated. And it is why we've summoned you here this evening. The White Fang is experiencing a transitional period. Mm -hmm. Growth requires change. And change yes. can be painful. If it's for the betterment of the Faunus, then it's a pain we can endure. What's our next mission? Containment. With the CCT tower still inoperable, we have the luxury of control over the flow of information. News of Adam's yeah. ascension has yet to reach Menagerie, but when it does, the citizens of Kuo Kowana will undoubtedly react poorly now that the chieftain has spoken out against us. It's my fault the Belladonna's had any ground to stand on. Do not concern yourself with past failures, Ilya. Focus on the future. We have an opportunity for redemption. What do you need? Assassinate Blake or the chief? The Belladonna's are the only remaining threat to Adam's assault on Haven Academy. Come on. Come and on. So, they must be silenced. Murder all the Belladonna's. Silence? Like Sienna, they stand in the way of true progress for our people. Put in this on Ilya. Oh my! You alone, of course. Your brothers and sisters will be at your side. Okay. But your relationship with their daughter makes you an integral part of this operation. Blake, you want? We know how oh, betray she her and everything. Rest assured, High Leader Taurus has requested she be taken alive. Oh? But we cannot risk having her present. Well, that's just Adam friend. being a creep. But the people and possessive. of Menagerie... We'll come to understand what happens to those who speak out against the White Fang. And we'll be left without a leader until our victory is complete. So she has to kill Blake's sacrifice. dad and Sister take Celia. Blake to Adam. Somehow I don't see this going very well for you, unless Daddy is gonna die. That will really suck if that She's happens. right to worry about the citizens. It's possible they may come to see Gira as a martyr. It is a risk we must take for our High Leader. Oh, 
I will not allow them Go to away. ruin this. The Belladonna name has brought me nothing but grief. You've done well in finding the deserter. Bring her to me alive. But not before you've slaughtered her family. So evil. I promise to keep. He seems unwell. You he think? with him a tremendous burden. Are we sure he is the one to lead us? For now. I'm still we'll listening, you jerks. I'm coming for you next. Yes. Brother Yuma, did you see Tagira's messenger? He rests beneath the waves, along with his warning. Then all is well. Oh dear. Oh, you could feel that coming as soon as Ilya was about to be given a task. You know, it's, oh, you got to attack the Veladanas, no. And which perfectly sets up the whole Blake versus Ilya thing. I just hope that we're not setting up Daddy Dearest taking a fall. I think they'll subvert this. I, th I think we'll just get Blake versus Ilya and they'll successfully fight off the attack. But it's still so messed up. And oh, the implications of Adam wanting Blake alive are just too creepy to consider. Who knows what he has planned? Like, that's a big no. <laughs> Considering how he treated her at the fall of Beacon, th there was red flags and alarm bells everywhere there. Possessive ex that just has this creepy vibe to him treating her like a possession. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay a million miles away from him. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I really appreciated the first two scenes that we had that were just long enough. Blake and son having that discussion as you know about first impressions and about Ilya and about all of that that was really cool I, I really appreciated that um you know for what it was doing just to sit back and discuss how things are that kind of thing I like when we can actually slow down and do that it doesn't have to be all action all the time like, you know, I think that's what makes Ruby stand apart from a lot of other shows, especially anime, is that there's less focus on the fights. It's more the story and character development and how they react to everything that goes on every few episodes. I think that's a good paced way to do it because it allows to tell this expansive, long reaching story. And it just creates anticipation for when the next bit of uh, frantic thing is going to happen, when the next fight's going to happen, when the next dramatic reveal's going to happen. You know, it, it's good. And possibly one of my favourite scenes from the volume was between Ruby and Oscar. And not even in a rose garden since I'm on about in a very, very well done, uh, like, self-motivational speech from Ruby talking about her beacon experience and the fates of Penny and Pierre and stuff being all reflective about how she can't let it get her down and stuff and how she perfectly described how much of a threat Salem is everything in that script was very tight um, it was very well thought out and it certainly started tugging at my heartstrings and I had to like wipe some dampness away from my eyes because as Blake said Ruby is very much the uh, essence of purity and it, it, she's had to go through and put up with so much and the fact that she can maintain her positive hero like attitude despite how much it pains her inside you know, she she sees the injustice in the world she wants to stand up to it a little bit like Blake but Ruby has more optimism about her she's less jaded to the world because she didn't grow up in as in in as tough of an environment as Blake I couldn't get my pronunciations out then um 
she, it was perfect to be letting her feelings out like that um, around Oscar, who's n completely new to all of this. So they were sort of kindred spirits, in a way. They're the youngest, the less experienced of everyone, you know, if we're going in order. It was good. It was really cool. And it was also good to see Oscar having realistic doubts as a previous non-combatant. He was just a farm boy after all. He's realizing how crazy all this shit is and he's like, who would want this? Well, you were all written to go through this, so it's the card you've been dealt, buddy. It's how we react when this responsibility is given to us that defines who we are. So I hope Ruby has instilled a lot of confidence in that boy. I hope to see good things from him before the volume's through. Uh, things are shaping up really well. Uh, what, what's next? What's next? The Gnome Bites song. I have no idea. That's probably the Raven episode. I'm looking forward to that. So until then, I shall see you guys next time.